Did Jesus really exist? Philosopher Bertrand Russell once wrote, Historically, it is quite doubtful whether Christ ever existed at all, and if he did, we do not know anything about him. Now this is a staggering claim, especially in light of the fact that a significant portion of the world's population claims that not only did Jesus exist, he is also the only authority on how one should live. So we have to take this issue seriously. Did Jesus really exist? Let's set aside the New Testament for a moment. What can we learn about Jesus just by studying history? As it turns out, the ancient Roman historian Tacitus, who's been referred to as the ancient world's most distinguished historian, records one of the most significant events in Jesus' life. He writes that Jesus was crucified under the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. At the time, history was usually only written about kings and other important people. Jesus' career to that point was that of a traveling preacher and healer in a backwater province that Rome didn't even care about. So the fact that Jesus is even mentioned at all is staggering. Additionally, this is the only historical mention of Pilate. So the fact that he is linked with the death of Jesus is particularly significant. We also have the account of Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian employed by Rome mm. shortly after the time of Jesus. In his works, Judean Antiquities, the following historical facts about Jesus are affirmed. Jesus was a wise man, a doer of startling deeds. He was executed by crucifixion by Pilate, and he had a group of followers that still existed at the time of his writing. Again, the fact that Jesus gets so much airtime is astounding, given that both Jews and Romans hated Christianity. Neither Tacitus nor Josephus had any incentive to record anything about Jesus, unless it was actually true. There are tons of other non-Christian historical references to Jesus, including the facts that Jesus was executed by the Jews, when Jesus was executed, an unusual darkness covered the land, and that Jesus was crucified on the eve of Passover. So just by studying historical references of Jesus, we can learn that Jesus was a Jewish teacher, he performed healings and exorcisms, he was rejected by the Jewish leaders, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate in the reign of Tiberius, his followers, who believed he was resurrected, grew massively in numbers and spread out geographically all the way to Rome by AD 64. All kinds of people from the cities and countryside, men and women, slave and free, worshipped him as God by the beginning of the second century. Now earlier, we set the New Testament aside for the sake of argument, but now let's bring it back to take a look. The history we just studied corroborates what's found in the New Testament, so it's worth wondering, should the New Testament also be considered historically accurate? Hmm. Here are three reasons to consider the New Testament as historically accurate. First, we have more ancient manuscripts of the New Testament than any other book we would consider accurate canonical history. Also, the amount of time that passed when the New Testament was first written and when the first copies were made is a significantly shorter duration than for many other ancient texts. Here's why this matters. The more copies we have, the more confident we can be that we can recreate what the original document said. The shorter the time interval, the less opportunity there is for copying errors. For the sake of comparison, let's look at Tacitus again. We only have 20 copies of what he wrote and the earliest copies were written 1,000 years after his originals. In contrast, we have over 5,000 New Testament copies, the earliest ones dating within 50 years of the original writings. So, if we consider sources like Tacitus to be historically accurate, it's reasonable to consider the New Testament historically accurate as well. Secondly, the New Testament has repeatedly been proven true where it mentions historical facts. Archaeological discoveries have confirmed many references made in Luke's writings. For example, he correctly refers to Philippian rulers as praetors rather than doomviers. He correctly places the city of Iconium in Phrygia, not in Lycaonia, as Cicero states. And he correctly identifies the Corinthian proconsul that encounters Paul as Gallio. Therefore, if the New Testament is true in these historical facts, it's reasonable to think it's trustworthy in other regards as well, such as its mentions of Jesus. Thirdly, the New Testament records many incidents that could potentially damage the reputations of early disciples of Jesus. Potentially scandalous or harmful things like Jesus calling Peter Satan, or the fact that the disciples constantly misunderstood who Jesus was and what he was about. There's no reason for this content to be included unless the authors wanted to record what actually happened. Back to the root topic, Bertrand Russell says there's no evidence that Jesus existed. Historical and biblical record offer evidence that, well, he did. So, did Jesus really exist? If we're going by researched evidence, then it seems pretty clear.